This podcast is sponsored by Release Winery. Every wine tells a story. Each growing season, it's our goal to create an artisan Napa Valley wine of exceptional quality. Join us as the story of this ultra-limited wine continues. Learn more at releasewinery.com. Uh, my first vintage is actually 2011, uh, but it was in France. So uh, my first vintage was at Chapoutier in the Rhone Valley. Um, I, I was expecting to actually go to Bordeaux, but um, the winemaker who I was going to work with uh, ended up getting a job at Chapoutier, which at the time I didn't know much about, um, but later found out it was an amazing place to work, maybe even better than being in Bordeaux. Uh, so we headed off there with my uh, wife, and we both worked a harvest uh, at Chapoutier, which was incredible for a number of reasons. For you know, working with absolutely world class fruit, um, and also we got to live with the winemaker, his wife, and his family. Oh, nice. So we got an all encompassing French experience. Um, his wife is an amazing chef, almost basically. So every night was, uh, we were greeted by amazing food with incredible wine. The internship itself was two months, and then we traveled around Europe for another two months. It wasn't, it wasn't. Um, basically, we, there's something f freeing about not having to be anywhere, and if you wanted to go to the next town over and explore you know, a Kalank or explore a new winery, that was be very freeing, but at the same time living out of your suitcase gets old and uh, food is not as well when you're on a budget. <laughs> so we were eating a little bit of cheese and ham, uh, ham and cheese rolls that we prepared in the car and yogurt uh, a lot of times because we were on a tight budget. But we did have plenty of good wine because we got, we got paid in wine. So we ended up with like five cases of incredible wine that we just uh, drank as we went along, shared with people. You still have one after that? Oh yeah, I brought back, we brought back I think almost two cases in our suitcases. I'm taking the baton from him in a way. He retired um, due to some health issues, but I'm really excited to work with his legacy. Um, tasting through his wines since I think the earliest one I've tasted is 2004. Fantastic, uh, especially the Cabernets. I've been really impressed, and some of the people that I've tasted with have been really impressed by our library of wines. Um, so yeah, it's it's going to be challenging not having him around, but um, exciting at the same time. Work with um, the property with our estate, which is absolutely amazing, which I think you saw last time. So basically, I did a harvest in France. Um, I come from a finance background, so I didn't study uh, enology in uh, college. And working in France totally changed my perspective about what I wanted to do in the future. My wife was kind of the one I was um, driven towards wine. And once I fell in love with working in a cellar, basically in a winery setting, I decided that I wanted to do it for a living. Um, so then traveled to Mendoza, um, worked another harvest under Paul Hobbs at his winery, Vina sure. Cobos. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I really enjoyed working with Paul, very meticulous uh, winemaker, um, making tremendous wine. So I came back to uh, California and uh, did another internship at his winery here in Sebastopol, his flagship winery. And then stayed with, uh, on with Paul Hobbs for almost seven years. Did everything from cellar rat to lab tech, enologist, the whole gamut basically there until I really wanted to do something else. Uh, work, uh, learn different styles, work with other appellations. Um, and I had just applied for a blind posting, a uh, small vineyard. I wanted to get be really hands-on and do a variety of tasks so um saw this posting sounded really interesting met the owner met the sort of there's a transition winemaker uh while um between mark and myself and just 
I went up there, love the site. Uh, it's really a special place when you get up there, just the exposure, the soils, uh, the views, um, and you can just tell the vines are in perfect balance, which it's hard because in a lot of places you see over vigorous vines, um, especially in that area. But just I think the soils and the exposure really bring everything into balance up there. It's at 1,400 feet. Um, so yeah, it's a really special place. That's what really drew me the most is the land.